Hey folks, it's me. And today with the Raspberry Pi, we're going to be doing a little bit of assembly coding. Um, as a matter of fact, we've already done two other files previously, and they were a lot like this one. So I decided not to start until this third one, which is going to introduce a couple of concepts in particular, just this, the way in which your assembly source file will divide into um, data and text and a few other interesting parts. So let's go ahead and get started first. Let's go ahead and uh, open the uh, terminal. And in the terminal, let's uh, go to the desktop. And of course, we're going to check to make sure that assembly folder is there, which it should be. And we're going to open Vim. And our file. Here we go. And let's. Uh, Okay, let's turn on the syntax. Uh, let's set our numbers. I know I should do this in a VimRC file. Um, I'll do it later. But right now, we'll just do it this way. Okay, let's... Uh, first off, we have our comments. And especially since if you're beginning, you really want to read the comments. Uh, very important. Okay, so, here I can just explain. Okay. Now in our data section we have data, we have our VLI, and we're going to go ahead and define four variables. We have A, B, and C, and our string variable. Now, um, as you noticed, um, check out the little uh, explanations. I wanted to give you those so that if you want to know more, pause the video. Where are you? Okay, 44. Here's our last one. Now, this works. We're going to store it. Okay, let's move on to the code. And to identify our code, we're going to text, local main, and external. And now we're going to identify our function. We're just going to call it some punk. Okay. And we're just going to get the two integers that we already created in register 1 and 2. We're going to add them up and save the results in register 0. Well, let's define it. Punk. And push. Now these, uh, these are cool functions, by the way. You should read up more. Uh, add. Pop. That returns. Now let's go to our main function. And this one is going to pass two integers to the sum func, and it's going to give us our result back. Okay. So main push IP and link register. Register R1, we give it a value. And well, we identify the location, the address of A into R1. And then we give it the value. Okay, and now R2, we do the same thing. And we're going to okay, then we're gonna branch our sum func right in here so that we can give it those values that we just acquired. Okay. And then we're gonna get the address of C. So okay, let's move on. Okay, LBR, load register. Register 2 with a value of C. Okay. And then we're going to store register 0 with the value of C. And okay, now everything's done. Let's go ahead and print our function. Just 
to remind you what that looks like. Remember that slash. Don't make the mistake of uh, using the wrong slash. Okay. Of course we're gonna. Okay. So register. We will get the value of string, which is what we want. And then we're gonna give it the value of one, two, and three. That's how we identify what we're going to print. Let's go call these guys. Then the R3. That's okay. R3. Okay. And. Now let's do another branch link after we're done defining our, our variables. Okay, branch link to the print function. So that prints the result. And since we're done, our push that we had now turns into pop so that we return everything back to the operating system. So the program counter, and we are done. Let's go ahead and write quit. Okay, and let's start compiling. So the assembly output file. Is the one that we want to create, and the source file, the one we just created. The logic's always the same, so keep that in mind. Ah. Okay, our error. Okay, let's go back into Vim. Turn on the syntax to help us out. Oh, I know where it's at. It's right, yeah, right down here. Right there. See that? I didn't turn it into a comment. So let's add the at symbol. Right, quit. Let's run it. Good. Now let's run the GCC. Same thing. And pay attention to how we're creating them, okay? Because lots of people get it backwards and that won't work. <laughs> okay, so if everything worked, you should have gotten that value. And that should have given you a good idea of just how this works. I know we could have done this so simply in other programs. But assembly is kind of a little more drawn out. It has its benefits later on though. Now let's go ahead and look at the code one more time, just in case you have any doubts. There we go. So I hope that, uh, there we go. So I hope this uh, was illuminating, um, helped you out. And if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. I'm um, kind of busy, so if I can't answer, I apologize, but I will try. Okay, thanks a lot, and take care.